and I and I just want you to receive the word of God and continue to worship in the chat. I invite you to come on in the room one more time this morning, Elder Winston Rowe and the Holy Ghost. God bless you, man of God. Over to you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ, the superior name. Blessed be the name above every other name. Hallelujah. And that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. And it is he who have made us and not we ourselves. For the Lord is God. And it is he who have made us and not we ourselves. Oh, that's a very great statement. Not we ourselves. And this morning, I'm thanking him that I didn't make me, that he made me. Can you imagine if I didn't make me and you didn't make you? But thanks be to God, we belong to a supreme being who is above all. Hallelujah. And I greet the presence, his strong presence on this platform. Amen. I know he is honoring all those who are on this platform, the desires of your heart. And to the person, the anointed one who God has given the vision and have accepted the vision, to have this platform, I therefore greet Prophetess Moulton, hallelujah, for her consistency also doing the things of God, bringing deliverance, hallelujah, blessing and salvation to many, hallelujah, evangelist stuttered, hallelujah, I bless you, sons of God, hallelujah, and be blessed, y'all also with your team, the team that you work with, very consistent team. I love it. Be blessed. And everyone online today, this morning, hallelujah. Love you all too and greet you all too in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. As we look at this very fundamental topic, there are things that are important to many persons now, and it is your bed. Some people love to be sleeping, but we are looking at something that is fundamentally important on this time and in this season. So we turn our Bibles again to Matthew 7, again, and verse 24 to 25. Matthew 7, it would be good if you could read it. It will be wonderfully good. All right. So he said again, therefore, whosoever hear these saying of mine and does them, I like, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house on a rock and the rain descended the floods came and the wind to blow and beat that house and it did not fall for it was founded upon a rock my god this rock we know who is jesus and it comes with consequences when we build upon the rock. I remember a song we used to sing that said, build on the rock, build on the solid rock. We are the church of the living God and the gates of hell shall never prevail. If you build on the solid rock, but everyone that heareth these saying of mine and do them not, doeth them not, 
shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. So there's another foundation out there. And the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall. Great was the fall. I therefore present to you this morning that as we continue, we are recognizing things that are important. We said yesterday morning that principles are important. Principles are important. And the reason why God gave us these principles, amen, is because these principles comes with promise. All right? Uh, amen. And if one thing that we need to do is to take back things that the devil have stolen from us, which is very, very clear to many of us on this line. The devil is a liar. He comes to steal, then he kills, and uh, finally he destroys. Three things that he does. He steals, he kills, and he destroys. That's the that's his job description. And we can break it down if we want, if the Lord lead on this platform this morning. So in going into the scripture from yesterday, our topic still remains that there is no failure in our Lord. There is no failure with our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. There is still no failure. Amen. And so we are entitled to take back the lost grounds that Satan has taken from us. And we are entitled to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. We do the word. There's a difference between these two verbs one hear and one do, hearing internal actions and mechanism of our biological makeup, but the action is external doing, hallelujah, of our biological makeup again. So we definitely have to hear and do. So when I hear a truth, that I'm commanded to do, I do it. I do it because I am going towards stretching forth my roots. I am anchoring in God like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. I would say all seasons. And this is likened unto anchoring our soul, our spirit, our mind, our heart, our strength in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are going to bear fruit. Hallelujah. But we have to deal with the rebuffs. We have to deal with the things that comes to buffet us. So here we are looking again at a man that is building on the right foundation and a man that is building on the wrong foundation. One is a rock and one is the sand. These two elements we don't have to describe what is sand and what is rock. Amen. Because we know what is it. But we know that sand is representing a weak foundation. We cannot afford in this time to be building on 
weak or wrong foundation. We cannot afford to be building, excuse me, on weak or wrong foundation. It's a waste of time because the devil not playing one, two, three red light with us. So foundation, again, in reminding, is based upon something on which something else is standing. Amen. And generally, the foundation must be strong to hold, to hold what it is going to hold up for life. All those columns are not just little light stones put together in the building. It has to go on a proper foundation. Hallelujah. Jesus is the rock. Get that, my beloved friend. Jesus is the rock. So, 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 so a foundation is a structure. And the structure represents the principles of the word of God. Amen. Remember now, the word of God is a body, B-O-D-Y, of knowledge, which consists of precept upon precepts, line upon line. Amen. And so we are, we are living by the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, principles upon principles. Words upon word. This, th these are very, very important things to, to, to understand, my beloved friend. Every country that you go, every country, if you go to America, Canada, in the Caribbean, even our country, Jamaica, where we are, some of us are there. Every, diff every, every government has different building codes, different building codes based upon the type of soil or the soil type that dominates your country. Hallelujah. And it based upon also your geographical location in which your country is. But the most important thing is always to get the foundation right. Because when you get the foundation right, you know what, you, what can happen in case you have a storm or anything. Amen. So one of the things that uh, the Lord wants us to recognize also in, in order to sink deep into the solid rock, plant ourselves deep in that solid rock called Jesus Christ, anchoring, oh God, our mind, our heart, our soul, our strength in the solid rock. We have got to understand doctrines. We've got to know that doctrines, my beloved friends, let me just break it to you this morning because we're going straight there, that doctrines are important, especially if we are looking for a, a covenanted relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and to stay with him and become one with him. Very important in a covenanted relationship because it is going to help. Listen, the doctrine is going to help to build strong and good foundation. And only the applications of the principles of the kingdom can lead to a strong foundation in our individual life in church in our marriages in our family in our businesses in our community and also in our nation and government and any other institution you is gonna have to build my god almighty on principles principles i have to build on the, the right building code i have to get it right and apply the right codes because it is by the right codes that i will build the proper 
structure. Somebody need to say structure. It is by the right code that we will build the proper structure. If we do not apply the right coding, hallelujah, we are not going to have a proper structure to go up. And I am very concerned about the building because there are many that build but did not build upon the solid rock. There are many that are building but did not build according to the requisite requirement, according to the blueprint that is so necessary, the blueprint of the living God. And all of these things comes with a blueprint. That's why we can talk about principles because principles are really relating to the prince of God, the, the structure upon which God wants us to, 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 to establish our voyage, to establish our life, to establish our marriages, to establish our dealings. He wants us not just to be freelancers, but he wants us to build upon the solid rock. Hallelujah. And so, uh, and so quickly, as we look at where God wants to lead us, uh, amen, this morning, there are many spirits that are gone out into the world. There are many spirits. The Bible tells us many spirits. It means you have more than a trillion demons, trillion out there all over the world trying to bring somebody to hell. Always remember, you have more angels in heaven and with us than demons on earth. And demons are in their trillion, trillions. So angels are trillion, 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 trillions. Amen. So God is not a loser. So, so, so let's look at what we talk about doctrines. Doctrine, very important. If you look at the foundation of the church in Acts 2, you will realize that after the apostles, when they received the gift of the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues, and the Spirit of God gave them the utterance, you will see that God did not feel because he promised them that there's going to be line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, and with another tongue, and with another tongue. In other words, he prophesied that this coming in this coming in this dispensation that is to come there's gonna be a different language that, that has never been spoken on earth before he's gonna give us another tongue hallelujah and so when the day of pentecost was fully come now listen you recognize that the church the foundation of the church my God, did not come from man. It did not come from no contractor, no mason, uh, no, no plumber, no engineer. But this was engineered by Jesus Christ himself. He told the apostles that they should wait in Jerusalem in the upper room. And the apostles with their wives and children my God Almighty, many of them, the Bible didn't give us a perfect count, but we know that it was families, mainly families, amen, 120 men, and just imagine the women that were there, and I believe you have more women that were there in the upper room, because women are intercessors by natural birth of a woman uh, you are a natural intercessor you were born to give birth you are born to travail and give birth even though we men do pray and travail in the spirit also but you are a natural travailer amen and the Bible said when they received the holy ghost my god and they began to speak in tongues a rush uh, the, the bible said suddenly a rushing mighty wind came from heaven and they received the holy ghost spoke in tongues many heard them cloven tongues like a fire many heard them in jerusalem and they began to mock them some say you are drunken etc you know the scripture very popular scripture and peter got up with the 11 and he preached that morning that morning and said we're not drunken as you suppose but this was that which 
was spoken by the prophet Joel, amen, that in the last days, amen. And so the Bible said, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and they asked the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Because we are in jeopardy. Hallelujah, God, we make a mistake. We kill our Messiah, our Lord and Prince. Oh my God. And so if you look at what happened then, Peter gave them the, 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 the command from heaven and asked them to repent. And when they repent, he told them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. The same sin that you repented of is now washed away when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he says, you shall receive what you're hearing. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that day, a foundation was laid. Somebody need to be saying, thank you, Jesus. I don't have to hear you. The foundation of the church was laid. No other foundation can any man lay because this is already laid. I don't care what great Bishop Rick you have or what great apostleship you have or how many Bible college you have been to and have BSSC and PhDs and Doctor of Divinity or what, um, all of these things, you can't lay another foundation. And this is where the, 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 you know, this is where the warfare is, my friend. But listen, keep this in your mind. As long as you're anchored in this foundation, God is not a feeling God. God cannot feel. There is no failure in our Lord Jesus Christ. He did not feel the apostles on the day of Pentecost. He did not feel them. And he did not feel them. No time at all. Hallelujah. And so it's important to realize when they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, received the Holy Ghost, it was approximately 3,000 men. 3,000 persons got baptized that day. And the Bible then said now that, look, they did not change the foundation. They did not change My God. the blueprint. They did not mm. change the specifics. They did not change yes. the building code, but they continued steadfastly. In the apostle doctrine preach. Amen. And so, and and so, the doctrine in this time. If we're gonna overthrow Satan and take back in the name, this is a very serious morning, Amakush, and and take back everything the devil has stolen from us. Then we have to be rooted and grounded. Yes. In the original foundation, this foundation that started on the day of Pentecost, hallelujah, the only thing that will make us not to be rooted and grounded is our pride, because My pride God. is poison, pride yes. is venomous, pride comes from Satan, remember, mm. when he was in heaven, he was Lucifer, Always remember this. And the Bible said that he is a liar from the beginning. He's a oh. murderer. The scripture went on to describe that this angel fell because of pride. So now you see the family of pride. The family of pride is lie. And the family of pride is murder. And anywhere that you have a lot of lies speaking on the radio through music some of those songs that you listen to their lies don't sing them hallelujah some of those things that you're saying they are not true lies invoke murder anytime anywhere that lies are prominent lies comes through iniquity my god almighty lies come through disobedience and rebellion lies every rebellious soul Every rebellious person is a liar. Every disobedient person is a liar. And it comes from, the, the, it comes from Satan. Mighty because he was disobedient, he was rebellious. He's a liar from the beginning. And so when there is a lot of lie, then we deny righteousness. And when we deny righteousness, it means that we scrap holiness. 
And when we scrap holiness, it means that we walk in the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. So we are promoting the pride of life. So it is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes that empowers the pride of life. So when a man cannot control his sight and his flesh, it means that he cannot control his flesh if he can't control his sight. And a woman, the same. Because every little thing you see you want, even if you don't want it, you will go to the store to buy one pair of shoes and you see another one that is not, you didn't go to buy and you end up buying five. <laughs> My God. Oh boy. Oh boy. Because you just believe you should have it. You know, it, I'm just saying that because it happens. Go ahead, go ahead Elder. It go happens. Ahead. You know, I laugh because I know that there are many persons, you know, it happens to all of us. You go to buy one thing and you end up coming out with 10 things, you know. But sometimes you don't really need what you bought. And it is still at home putting down dry rotten. Amen. But it, these things also comes and lead the lust of the flesh. Amen. And the lust of the eyes equals the pride of life. If there is no lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes, then you can't have pride. It means nothing attracts you more than the things of God. Even though you have your car, your house, you are well set in life, it doesn't attract you like God. Jesus Christ is the center of your life, the center of our joy, the center of our money, the center. Oh God, we are so Christ-centric that nothing of the sort like these the enemy can use to tempt us to walk in pride. Pride is a weapon that the devil uses to eliminate a lot of us who are leaders to eliminate a lot of us who say we love God. Sometimes you don't even know you have him. But let me just step into the, 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 the foundation of Pentecost. The apostles there declare the things of God. And this is the foundation that Paul refers to in Ephesians 2 and 20, that we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And Jesus Christ is a chief cornerstone. So if I built on another foundation, which is not of the apostles and prophets, then I am not rooted and grounded. I am building on sand, S-A-N-D. And you know the scripture we just read in Matthew 7, what happens to those who build on sand, Lord God Almighty. And so we see where the apostles and that day, they continue steadfastly in one foundation, on one foundation. And they continue in the doctrine. Listen, folks, listen, because there are many doctrines out there that does not give salvation. They sound good. They sound sweet. They sound very encouraging. They motivate you. They make you feel good. Some make you cry. The words are good that they preach. Most men with a wrong spirit preach a right word. Don't you know, men, oh God Almighty, you can listen to a good word from a wrong spirit. Amen. That's so what happened. <clears throat> what happened because there are many spirits that are gone out into the world that do not confess that the Lord is God. They do not confess Jesus to be Lord. They can say it. You can say it, but you don't mean it. You are just saying it because you can say it. But when you need or when you mean it, it comes with action. My God, it comes with doing. Hallelujah. And so, and so when we talk about foundation now, listen, we are talking about building upon the doctrine, the word of God. A doctrine, remember, the doctrine of God is a principle. Doctrine consists of a body of knowledge 
which, con- which is a body of word, which the body of word consists of uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, my God Almighty. And that's why the scriptures are important because out of the scriptures, if you search the scripture, you are going to find only one thing but the word of God and the manifestation of the word of God which is the Lord God himself who manifests in flesh because the whole word of God equals to the Lord Jesus Christ because he was the word that became flesh in other words he was God's scriptures that became flesh God became flesh amen and so he comes with his word to shear and to give so that we who were living on the sand, we who were living on the wrong foundation, we will find the right foundation. He said to the scribe and Pharisees that if you don't believe that I am he, you are going to die in your sins. And it goes today. If you don't believe that the Lord is God, you're going to die in your sins believing in God, but did not believe God. Are you hearing me? Believing in God, but did not believe God. And so he went preaching, teaching as Messiah. Messiah means God. Messiah means the king of Israel. Messiah means the king of the Jew. It means that this is the God that David wrote about. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong, my God, and mighty, mighty in battle. He was talking about he who is to come, Lord God Almighty. He who should come to the womb of a virgin. For unto us a child is born unto us. A son is given. The prophet Isaiah wrote it in Isaiah 9. He says, he says, for unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. My God. And he was talking about Jesus. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful the Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. My God. And so if you read these, it was God coming to move us from the sand and put us on the rock. Lord God Almighty, it comes for us to dig deep in him, to plant our soul upon him, in him, because he is the rock of all ages. Hallelujah. The right foundation. Lord God, not the foundation that built by man. So, so, so as was said before, principles are important. Principles are fundamental truth. And these fundamental truths, it brings and it breeds all other truth. Listen what I'm saying. The fundamental or the foundation truth breeds all other other truth it brings all other truth and all other truth is going to grow from this foundation amen that's why when you plant a mango seed it does not bring an apple because it must produce after its kind it must produce after its kind when you plant amen a corn seed you do not get apple because the seed must produce after its kind. That's a principle. We produce after our kind. Always remember, a dog produces dog. Amen. A cow must produce another cow. We call her a calf. Amen. So, So that's the biological principle that God laid down from the beginning. That's a foundation that nobody can change. Even scientists 
try to change these things, but they can't twist it because a lion still bring forth lions. Don't play. The upper seeds still bring forth upper and upper tree. Don't play. We still in Jamaica love Aki. And when you plant the Aki seed, we did not get a breadfruit tree. We still get an Aki tree. And so foundations are important, fundamental foundation. And so when the day of Pentecost was fully come, my beloved brethren, this is the foundation, the root, the rock upon which Jesus told Peter in Matthew 16 that upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. So, so, so you, you realize that the church is built, founded upon a rock. My God. So Paul said, I will say it again, Ephesians 2.20. He says again that we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now, let me break this down for you before I go into anything deeper. Amen. The foundation of apostles and prophets is the only thing that God builds on. He doesn't build in anything that God does in time. He has to do it upon a foundation that is replicating the apostolic and the prophetic. That's how he builds. That's how he created creation. In the beginning, Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Listen, the earth was the Lord form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Remember now, and listen, God. And God said, let there be light in that 6 p.m. watch. And guess what? There was light. So listen how it works now. Let me give you the apostolic technology. What happened? The mechanism that God used, the technology that God used, is that God entered into time first. And when he entered into time first, listen, he is proving a point according to the word. The word declared that he generally sends apostles first. So he sent himself first in time. Listen, he sent himself first in time. So he was literally standing in the apostolic. He was the first apostle. He sent himself into time and then he prophesied. He released the prophetic. Let there be light, he prophesied. So the foundation no begin and there was light. And that light, out of that light, he began to create creation. But the foundation is in God. He made the heaven and the earth. He sent himself first in time because he's a, <laughs> that's why that's why Paul said to the Hebrews that he's our chief apostle. Amen. He sent himself first in time and prophesied. So everywhere that you see the apostolic, then there is prophetic. So on this platform, you have the prophetic and Come also on. you have the apostolic. Talk about it. Oh, the, 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 the the prophetic and the apostolic works together. Always remember, that's why you get results because the apostolic deals with the power while the prophetic is speaking into the power. So the prophetic and the apostolic works together. So the apostolic empowers the prophetic and the prophetic turn around and empower the apostolic and the apostolic empowers the prophetic and the prophetic turns around and empower the apostolic. And, the and, so, and, 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 and so there is complete agreement with the yeah. apostolic and the prophetic. That's yeah. why the doctrine on the day of Pentecost, Paul declared to the Ephesians people, my God, my God, my God, my God, that we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. You know why? And Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Oh God, somebody needs to get it. And so he placed them in the church, apostles and prophets first in the church because the foundation must continue. The foundation is important so that Jesus Christ can be, must be the chief cornerstone. If 
<laughs> let me go slowly here. If we are not acknowledging the prophetic, my then God, we are not acknowledging the apostolic. Say it again. The apostolic say it again. Say it again. With the Woo! prophetic, so that Jesus Christ will be the chief cornerstone. No, if that does not happen, if that technology is not happening, if that mechanism is not happening, if that principle is not happening, then Jesus Christ is not the chief cornerstone. He's not your president. He is not your king. He is not your leader. He's not to be a prime minister. He's not your God. He's not your Lord because the foundation have been shifted and he cannot be the chief cornerstone, except we are in the original seed foundation that we are that must be established by the apostles and prophets. Amen. Listen. So, if that is not the case, oh, bless God forever. Jesus Christ is just a mention in your life. You are just mentioning the name. We are just talking about the name, but we don't have nothing to do with it. Because the foundation is not established. Foundation for God is very important, my beloved brethren. Believe me, foundations are important for yes. me. And, and, so, and so this was what God came to give us. Because Adam and Eve went and lived on sand. For all these years, even when he gave out a covenant, man was still living on sand. But God decided to send the rock. And the rock was Jesus. This rock is Jesus. The only one. Hallelujah. And so we're not looking at this building. This building. So doctrines are important. The apostles continue steadfastly on one seed. One original foundation. One Lord. No, not three. <laughs> one faith. Not ten million. One baptism. And the one baptism means the baptism according to the foundation. Not just go down in water and an uncircumcised man who believe in God but don't believe God. Repeat some words over you called Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You have got to be careful about your soul because that does not have any power. You My have God. to go to the original seed. Jesus Christ must become your husband, your chief cornerstone, your president, your commander and chief. Like sometimes I'm praying and I said, Jesus, you are my commander and chief. You know why? The Bible said he is the commander of the angel's army. Just think about it for one second. The commander of the angel's army. My God, once I had an experience, I was going to preach in St. Anne and I was going to preach for about five days. And I went down the night before I started to preach. And when I went down, I didn't know they were going to ask me to uh, greet the church and to preach that night. And the pastor says, well, you come early. You know, uh, you, you can start preaching tonight because I didn't want to drive down the day the next day. And I preached for about 30 minutes. And I told the church, meet me, meet me midnight tonight. Every one of you, anywhere you are, let's pray at midnight. And I went to the home I was staying. And at midnight, I moved into intercessor prayer in regards to the week of meeting that I was going to have to preach and so i prayed at midnight went to bed finished praying went to bed woke up at six o'clock in the morning like you hear hallelujah and i prayed in my six o'clock watch and suddenly as i finished praying and sat on the bed i was caught up in a rapture <laughs> but i was still on earth but i went somewhere and I, and, and, and I saw heaven. I was standing up. I saw the heavens open. And when I saw the heavens open, I saw one door, one gate. And I saw battalions and battalions and battalions of angels just coming out, 
spewing out. I don't know if you ever see the, um, a waterfall just running, running, running. They were just coming out in bundles. They had sword in there and their sword was fire. My God Almighty. And they were coming out like they were going to war. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of angels. And there was a man that was standing right beside me. And he was clapping his hand and directing them. You go to the north. You go to the south. You go to the east. You go to the west. And he was the commander. And you could see him that he was the leader of the angel's army. My God. And that's the first time I encounter the warrior angels in my life. They are real. And I encounter Michael, the archangel, when he looks at me and said, everything is okay for this week. Go. Hallelujah. Listen, I did not preach with fear. I preached with boldness. And it was so awesome. To God be the glory. And so my beloved brethren, my beloved brethren, we cannot change the foundation that makes Jesus Christ your chief. Your chief. You know what the word chief mean? He's a provider. The word chief mean he's a leader. And so it's important to understand now that he has given us a foundation upon the doctrine. A doctrine, listen this now. A doctrine is a rule. It's a foundation. It is a rule. Amen. Remember now, it is line upon line, precept upon precept. So it has rules in it. It is a constitution because it comes from the constitution of heaven. It was not made by Japan or China or America or Russia. Oh, you want to call those big names? It was made in heaven and distributed in the earth by the power of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So a doctrine is a rule. It means that when we walk in the doctrine, we are walking in governmental authority. We are walking, oh God Almighty, representing the kingdom of God. So the doctrine has rulership over people. Listen, over demons, over people, over community. Listen, over all these foundations, demons, house, community, state, parish, my God, province, country, and even churches, because it rules, it rules. Whether you live or you die, the doctrine rules. That's why my there God. is no country on earth that can exist without a doctrine. That's why the war is about to, I pray it doesn't happen with Russia and the, and, 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 and other country, oh God Almighty. It's Ukraine, Ukraine, oh, Ukraine, Ukraine. So, 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 so because, because it, it, Russia have a doctrine. If you know about Russia before it becomes now, it was a USSR, Union of Socialist Soviet Republic. And it consists of all of those countries. All of those countries were communists. All of them were communists that worship communism, Marxism, Leninism, and all these things. America had its doctrine. The doctrine of America is called the Monroe Doctrine. I know some of you might not know that. The Monroe Doctrine that deals yes. with capitalism and, and, and democratic ideas. Amen. So America is inherently a capitalist country. That's why we had the Cold War. It was capitalism versus communism. And so the East was communist and the West was capitalist. So that's why when you hear um, for the politicians say that the Democratic Party in America are, are leaning to the left, is other words, they're, try, they're, they're trying to say that they're leaning to socialism or communism. And that's a lie. America will never be communist, except you have a dictator. America is the, is, is the foundation of capitalism cannot, no matter if you are democratic, ruling, or republican. It's just to trick the people's mind because the people don't read, they don't know, they don't even know their history. They would not even believe that because it's not true. Hallelujah. And the communist country, you know, you realize that Putin is trying to establish communism again, total, total, totalitarian rule again. So all of these comes out of doctrines 
The warfare is one of doctrine. Look at China. China is communist. And China has the doctrine of communism that they call, the, uh, that, that they read this book that is called the quotation of Mo Xian Tiong. Amen. Uh, uh, Mo Xian Tiong. That's what I know. And these are communist co uh, um, um, quotation. Amen. So that China of a central politburo. Amen. A politburo is the office of the communist leaders. That's why Xi Jinping is the president. But he a first and second and third vice president because they are communists. They don't have election to move uh, uh, to remove presidents he, he can be president for life and that's what Putin is doing too so there's two different systems but if you look at the difference you realize the lifestyle of the west and the lifestyle of the of those who are in the east who are communists you see where China used communism to develop even faster than capitalism why because China have a doctrine a communist doctrine, which is the doctrine of Moise Chung, and everything is built on that. He is the father of modern development or modern communism of China, Moise Chung. And so everything, they might not tell you, everything is surrounded upon this man's discipline that he took from Marxism, that he took from the book of Marxism and Lenin's, Leninism and Engersism, and so he made a doctrine out of it in China. Even so, Cuba, Cuba called their socialism revolution. Russia has a different level of communism, and so that can strike a war. But America has its Monroe doctrineism. So there are developments on every side, but everything is coming out of a doctrine, an inherent planted doctrine my god look at china china still continue to be communist and china still have their doctrine and they're not changing it no matter what happened they are now the superpower are are uh, well 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 they are competing with america in every aspect 99 percent and so you see why in that country everything is based upon their doctrine they are built upon the foundation of the doctrine of communism through the quotations of Moise Chung. And so they believe you can't move them. They will give their lives for their country. They will fight. They don't care what the world wants to say. You can't stop China. Everything is made in China. You check it out. The only thing is not made in China is my children. Everything is made in China. Everything made in China, made in China, made in China. You check it out. Your children are not made in China. Look at the name of God Almighty. So you have got to realize that China comes through the ropes because of doctrine. They become powerful. Oh, God Almighty. When you build upon a foundation that you believe in, oh, God, that's why they fight the church in those countries. That's why they fight religions in those countries, because nothing must challenge the doctrine of communism in China. You saw the new rules, the new regulations that the Communist Party of China is putting out. My God, it is to make sure that religions die. And those My who believe God. in them die because the country is not built on that and religion. Most of them believe in Buddha and they believe in Buddhism, but that's minor compared to the doctrine of communism, the quotations of Moise Tong. So this is the same thing on the day of Pentecost. My God, there was only one foundation and the apostles and those around them who got converted and saved, they anchored their soul oh god almighty they anchored their spirit into one lord one faith one baptism one doctrine the doctrine is a ruler remember when you walk in the apostolic authority you're walking in the fullness of the doctrine of the apostles you're walking in the strength of the doctrine of the apostles in other words you are walking and in the foundation of the doctrine of God. You cannot be overthrown. Oh God Almighty, just believe this this morning. You cannot be moved. And so you walk in governmental authority. Oh God, what you prophesy will come to pass when you pray 
God listens to you because you have the government upon your shoulder. You are representing the country of God, the kingdom of God. I am an ambassador. You are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. You are walking in rulership. You rule over principalities, demons, stronghold, sickness and diseases, poverty, all type of sickness and diseases. You rule because you are standing on the solid rock. My God, we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And if Jesus is my commander and chief, if Jesus is my Lord, if Jesus is my God, then who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Are you hearing me this morning? Somebody, hallelujah. So you rule over your community when he hears it done. Oh God, I can give you so much testimonies. Oh God almighty about community. Done raised up in community where I am. And I stood up gunshot firing on Walcom Park Road and shot a fire, people screaming. The boys, them shooting up the people, them home, driving, walking, running with them 16 rifles. And I was down there. I can't forget this. And I raised my hands. Somebody said, duck, duck boy, get low, shot firing. I said, no, I raised my hands into the heavenless, standing in governmental authority. And I command every shot to stop fire and gun to oh see God. in the name of Jesus Christ. Preach. And instantly, instantly, because I stand on the doctrine of the apostles. My foundation is built by the apostles and prophets. And you know who is the chief? You know who is the commander? You know who is the God of the apostles? The Lord, the Messiah, the King, my God of the apostle, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And when I command the bullet to stop, not one shot fire again and everybody that was involved that is the ring leaders my god they never lived for a week the police got them i didn't pray for that i didn't pray for that but you take authority over your community oh god i can get into testimonies i don't want to get into them but it's important to realize that when you know you uh, 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 and what you stand and with whom you stand, my God, then you have no fear. My God, fear begin to run out of your kitchen. Oh, God Almighty, because I'm standing on the go solid ahead, rock. Go ahead. I am rooted and grounded. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let me go on. Let me go on and tell you some more about doctrine. Go ahead. Yes. Doctrine. Doctrine governs how one do things. Amen. In your everyday life because you're on the foundation amen it influences it influences because when you are standing on the foundation of the apostles and prophets then you are gonna influence anywhere you go so if there is darkness when you appear there is light without you saying a word you influences your atmosphere you influences your climate you influences seasons hallelujah and and when you do that it's not you but it's the chief cornerstone it's the chief cornerstone that's jesus christ oh my god so it influences even how you pray how you speak it allows you my God, and it tells you how to talk. And it also, you see, it is so powerful. It tells you when and how and where and why we must do what we must do. That's doctrine. It instructs you because it is in God. God is our instructor, teacher. He is our leader, our commander and chief. Hallelujah. We are planted in this rock. A doctrine, listen to this now, a doctrine, the doctrine of the apostles, Acts 2, 42, is a living structure. It's not a dead structure. It is a living structure. It's like a living organism that will hold, listen, it hold everything together in the dispensation of grace. It will everything because everything is based upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets in order to accomplish the things of the Lord Jesus Christ 
in the earth. So you must be standing upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. In other words, you are still at Pentecost, even though it's over 2,000 years and we are living all over the world, but we still stand on the rock upon which the apostles stood and preached. My God did miracles, prophesied, signs and wonders, and guess what? Died upon this foundation and they are with my the Lord. God. My God, therefore, the doctrine, listen to this, my beloved friend, the doctrine as a foundation, as a solid rock, must be strong, my God. The doctrine cannot be sandy. You cannot build upon the sand, Lord God Almighty. So that's what we are talking about. The doctrine must be strong. The doctrine must be firm. The doctrine must be solid, solid. And that's what the devil is doing today, giving us all type of winds of doctrine. You read Ephesians, so it, it, for it tells you that many are tossed to and fro by winds of doctrine. It means that we are, you're not solid. Everything you hear, you believe. You have no spirit to tell you that it's not right. You've got to stand on the Preach. solid rock. My God Almighty. And so listen, let me go quickly here. Then it is safe. I want to say this. Oh God, it is very safe, safe to say that the doctrine is a doing word. You do what the doctrine commands you to do. That's it. It's a doing word, which is an action word. Come back to action. I do the principles of the doctrine. I do what is line upon line, precepts upon precepts, amen, of the doctrine. In other words, my beloved friend, I am practicing the word of God that is released to the doctrine of God. And there are many persons that would say, oh, but the doctrine only came on the day of Pentecost. No, believe you me, the doctrine of God was with God in eternity before he stepped into time in Genesis 1. That's why he entered into time as an apostle and he prophesied into the time, into time and said, let there be light. So that was doctrinal. He was the chief, the chief creator, the chief cornerstone of the universe. And so he came, oh God almighty, in the prophetic and in the apostolic, in Genesis 1, 1, 2, 3, it proves that the foundation must be apostolic and prophetic so that God himself will be the chief cornerstone. So when you look at doctrine on the day of Pentecost, it was God instituting the continuity of the doctrine of Jesus Christ, the doctrine of salvation. And so they continue steadfastly. And so it was safe to say they did the doctrine. They do. Not, they were not just hear us but they do what the word says they do what the principle says that's why they were baptized into jesus christ's name because baptism is a principle that demonstrates something afresh something new as many of us that were baptized in him amen we put in jesus christ we put on christ oh god almighty we die with him roman 6 my god almighty we bury with him and so we go resurrect with him in other words if you plant the corn seed you go resurrect as a plant as a as a as a, as a plant with corn on it amen you're not gonna stay there and die you resurrect new. You don't see the seed come out of the ground when you plant the corn. You see something uh, begin to shoot and it shoot until it gives you millions of corn. So that's what it means. We, we are buried with him and we resurrect with him in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So we are in the foundation. So the doctrine is a doing word. You do, you do doctrine. Now listen to this. It's very important to realize that the doctrine is a structure. One of the reasons why they could not break the legs of Jesus Christ when he was on the cross was because the bones represent, you know, your bone represent the doctrine, the doctrine of your body 
is your bone. That's the structure upon which everything lies. Uh, uh, everything. If there was no bone in your body, then nothing. I, I, don't, I can't describe it. <laughs> but, but if there was no bone in your body, there was nothing to injure your lung on. There was nothing even. Uh, there, there was nothing but the bone of your body represent doctrine. It is. A, it has to be strong. It has to be fuerte. We say in Spanish. It has to be hard. My God Almighty. And so it's important to realize that the living God wants us to live in a living structure. So we have to do, do what the word says, the doing of the word. And you know, an action word, we call it a verb. We call an actual word. Those of us used to go to primary school, you know, they generally say the bird and the subject must match. You know, so you say the car is the subject and the verb is drive. So the car drive. Amen. The, 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 the car drive. Amen. Um, the plane, the airplane flies. Amen. Fly is the verb. Airplane is a subject. So, so uh, those things are important. The verb and the subject must match. So when we begin to sink our root in the rock, we become the subjects. Oh, God Almighty, the subjects of the kingdom. That's why the Bible said we are kings and priests, every one of us. We are subjects of God. The Bible said that we are hearers of God, H-E-I-R-S, hearers of God and joint hearers with Christ Jesus. So, so, so know you recognize that, look, we are subjects of the kingdom of God. We are sons of God with power because we are subjected to the kingdom of God. We represent our Lord Jesus Christ in the earth. And here comes the action. So if I am the subject, then it means that I have actions to do because the verb and the subject must match. So Jesus said that, go in all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, look at the verb, they shall cast out devils. They shall lay their hands on the sick. They shall be healed. Now, now listen to me. You see the verb there? is the cast out devil, that's the action. But because you and I are standing on the foundation, we are subjects of the kingdom. So the verb and the subject come into play. So we gonna do what God says we are to do because we are standing on the solid rock. We are not hearers of the word alone, but we are doers of the word amen so we can pray right here and when we pray right here then the word will work for us hallelujah so we are subjects my god almighty and there's one thing that the lord wants us to know is that the foundation never changes so you cannot confuse the foundation of the church with your culture because some of us we are coming from a background where our religion our organization are built upon a culture hallelujah but not upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets not upon My the God. doctrine of the apostles and so it's easy it's easy because cultures cultures are adaptable you can go anywhere in the world and adapt a culture whether good or bad you just adapt it my god you don't have to be taught a culture a culture are generally controlled by a demon a strong man amen so you go to some countries you know the culture because of the music because of the people you know that there's a strong man there's a demon like jamaica amen the culture of reggae give jamaica a demon called reggae where he that spirit is the strong man over many people's mind and attitude and Lord so it's ingrained in our culture it's not easy to come out 
only thing can rub that out is manifestation of the spirit of God. Manifestation like the apostles who can turn the world upside down. Who did use the doctrine of the apostles and turn the world upside down. The Bible said that everywhere that they went, fear came upon every soul. That's how powerful, my God Almighty, the doctrine is. If you look at the difference between culture and doctrine, the doctrine must be taught, amen, and it is taught within the structure of the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept. And if you look, I'm going fast here, oh my God. So the doctrine, as we just expressed, has authority and power. The doctrine, the foundation upon which we stand, not me and you, but the foundation as authority and power to infiltrate any culture for the will of God to be accomplished. Infiltrate, get involved, and bring people out to come to the knowledge of salvation. So if you look in the book of Acts, quickly, I know time is going, all of the Acts speaks of the doctrine of the apostles infiltrating culture. The first culture that the doctrine of the apostles infiltrated was on the day of Pentecost. I'm showing you, that's why we need apostles and prophets. Amen. True apostles and true prophets. Not some of these falls, one walking up and down, trying to rob the people with their words. Listen to me. I, uh, <laughs> we need true apostles and true prophets. All of the acts of the apostles, the doctrine of the apostles was just infiltrating cultures, cultures. And the day of Pentecost, he saw the culture of the Jew because the day of Pentecost was a big day and high day for the Jewish community. Are you hearing me? And so they did not appreciate God and these days anymore. So it had become a culture. And God says, I'm going to make the Pentecost be a day where they will never forget. And so God allowed the apostles to be in the upper room that same day when they came to Jerusalem. What God was doing, he was like a sniper. My God, a weapon of mass destruction to destroy the culture of the Jew because they turned the, 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 the covenant of God. The covenant of the Jew, they turn it into a, they turn it into a culture. That's where the scribe and Pharisees could not recognize their Messiah. They were living by a culture. You have got to be careful to get caught in a culture because it means that you're standing on the sand and you're going to be washed away. Jesus came and they tried to prove how much he was not the Messiah. He came unto his own and his own received him not because My they were God. in a culture. We, uh, my, my beloved brethren, uh, uh, we have come to a point I, I, I want to close this now, but we have come to the point in life where culture is challenging the true church. So there are many persons have no love, have no love. There are persons who are preaching who really have no love for each other, either for persons, neither themselves, but God is choosing a people in this last days, a people for his name's sake. My God, we are on the verge. Listen to this. I want you to get this. We are on the verge of a mighty revival. Some of us and some of those who you see big up, they're going to be moving. God have to shift them because they are too cultural. They are dealing with the church's system. Some of them don't even like what preach. Oh my God. Some of them can't even stand the prophetess. Some of them don't even want to hear the tongue speak. Some of them can't stand it. Oh God, but we are on the verge. I want you to get this word. It is prophetic, but it is right now. We are on the verge Go ahead. of a powerful, a hey. powerful revival. Yes. And like God allow that thing to come. He allows it. He allows the COVID to come. Because you see, oh Satan work. Oh, I'm going fast. Try to grab these things. Listen, oh the devil works is that 
He works with atmosphere. The atmosphere two years ago was ripe. My God, in 2019, when this, when this COVID came, it was 2019. It came yes, the end 2020. of 2019, going to 2020, yeah. Yes, when it came, the atmosphere was ripe for a revival. For a revival yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. But the devil saw it and realized that we were not ready for a revival. So he mm -hmm. filled the gap. He filled the gap with COVID-19 and brought a demonic revival upon the earth. My God Almighty, that took many lives. But here Jesus. comes the church. Here comes the church. We are using Zoom. We are using yes. these equipment to change the yes. atmosphere, the mentality of the people, to bring them into the anchoring, of the, to anchor them upon the solid rock. God, when you leave from this platform, you can overthrow your workplace. You can walk like a weapon for God that Ooh. destroys principles and powers Ooh. and spiritual wickedness in a place and the rulers of darkness of this world. No, no, yes. no. If you recognize how the enemy works, he looks for atmosphere. He looks when the atmosphere is ripe, when the place is swept and garnished and not occupied by us. He's coming and he's going to do what we did not expect and it's going to happen. My God, listen, in the Garden of Eden, he knew that God would generally come down in the cool of the day. And the atmosphere was set. And you know what he did? He came before God came to Adam. Look at this. He came. He knew the atmosphere was right. And he infiltrated the atmosphere, went into the garden. And you know what he did? He did something that caused every one of us to walk under a curse because he knew that if he can speak a wrong word, even in the right atmosphere, it will Jesus. affect mankind. And yes. that's what My happened God. even today. The word he said to Eve that you shall not surely die. And even today, man continue in sin, believing that they shall not surely die. That's the atmosphere that we are dealing with. That's why the Bible says iniquity abound. Because uh. there are many persons who wants to live like a dog and die like a king. It cannot be. And that's why God gave us this word. He wants us to know that now is the time. We are on the verge of a powerful revival that will yes. change our views of what is possible and profitable within the technology of the doctrine of the apostles. So this is where we are this morning. We're at a verge of a transformed <laughs> mind. Our minds are going to be transformed and we are going to change our views of what is possible and what is not possible and what is profitable and what is not profitable. My God Almighty, within, I use the word technology, the technology of the doctrine of the apostles. In other words, within the technology of the foundation upon which the church, the body of Christ is built. We are on the verge of a revival on this platform. My God, hey. some of you, my God, you're going to experience the things that you did not believe you will experience. Some of the things that your parents want to experience, you will experience it. God will appear to you. God will show you. God yes. will pull you into places. My God, that you didn't plan to go because we are on the verge of a mighty revival. This mm. is what we need go ahead. nothing else more than a paradigm shift from the That's system about, about. called church i call it the church system Woo! my god that system my that god system, that system is too Bridge. romantic it is too romantic it is from rome it is from the pope it is so romantic that many of us make love with the romantic system of the pope, jesus the catholic system that's why we have so many persons still romancing the trinity 
and telling God that he's three while Satan is one. They never tell the devil he's a trinity, but they try to tell the almighty God, the creator of the ends of the earth, who Hallelujah. alone sits high and looks Hallelujah. low. They try to tell him that he's three. You will lose your soul. If you don't believe that the Lord is God, then you're going to lose your soul. You can't tell Satan he's a trinity. I've never heard a song that saying Satan is a trinity. I've never heard a preacher. We have got to know that God wants us to have a paradigm shift. Mighty he God, wants yes. Just to stand upon the foundation of truth, the foundation of the apostles and prophets, so that He can be your chief, your chief, your chief, your chief provider, your chief protector, your chief, my God, in every aspect of your life, the chief cornerstone in your family, in your business, in your ministry. Lord God Almighty, all we need is a paradigm shift. One, one that will inspire with passion. Listen to this. It's going to inspire us with passion and purpose. My God Almighty, it's going to inspire us with passion, with purpose. The purpose of our objective is Jesus Christ manifesting Jesus Christ in the earth. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Paradise God. shift. It's going to require manifestation. You know what, my beloved brethren? We cannot afford to waste any more time. Yes. The only limit is our willingness to act. Don't you know that? Is our the only limit that you have is your willingness to act this morning. Act, do the word. Stand on the foundation. Speak like the apostles. Preach like the apostles. Baptize like the apostles, pray like the apostles, do like the apostles. That's the foundation upon which we are built. Where my God Almighty, where Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Listen, the time to manifest is now. The time to act is now, right now. This is the season to act. Is there somebody here? I know that God wants you to understand this. Oh God Almighty, the acts of the apostles, all they were doing in the acts of the apostles was building upon the foundation of apostles and prophets. That's all they did because Jesus was the chief cornerstone with the acts in the acts of the apostles. They were building, they were building on the solid rock. My God Almighty, are you building on the solid rock? Are you building in a religion? You're building in something that is killing your family. Your children need deliverance. My God, and your husband, your wife, the family need deliverance. And you're still holding on to that sandwich. It going to break with you. My God, the foundation is not upon the apostles and prophets. In fact, do you believe that you're still a church that preaches that there is no apostles? My God. My you're still, God. You're still, you're still a teaching. Oh, can, oh, can you, oh, can you, who oh, dare you, the blood of Jesus come against that spirit. You know why? Because they do not understand the foundation of apostles and prophets. They do mm. not understand the doctrine because the doctrine is called the doctrine of the apostles. Mm. The doctrine of the apostles. So what does that seed does? It breeds apostles. It must produce after its kind. The doctrine of the apostles must produce apostles. Just like a pig must produce pig. A corn must produce corn. A mango seed must produce mango. It's a biological principle and it's also a spiritual principle that the doctrine, the true doctrine of the apostles must produce men, women, who are anointed sons of God as apostles and prophets. Must produce that. Must. My God. Must produce that. Must. If not, the doctrine of salvation is wrong and every one of us going to lose our soul. Jesus. Yeah, so it must produce. The Bible teaches us about these seeds that went to sow. The sower went to sow some seed and some fall in different places. You have got to know that some ground was good and some ground was bad. But we have got to produce after our kind. 
after our kind. Read Genesis 1. Everything was commanded to produce after its kind. If the doctrine of God cannot produce after its kind, apostles' doctrine must produce apostles and prophets. Those are the two chief, my God Almighty, that God generally sent first. Even if you're going downtown to preach and you go downtown and you name Winston Rowe, that's nothing. But when you go in the power and the spirit of the apostle and prophet, when apostle and prophet come together, my God in agreement, in nothing can't stop that. Listen to me, my beloved brethren. You can't stop it. I don't care what law or what rule. When the prophetic and the apostolic come together, that foundation is governed, led Jesus. by the chief, yes. the chief Jesus Christ. You can't change it. That's why there's so many results on this platform because there's the apostolic and there's the prophetic flowing. You don't see that. Some of you go to different churches. It's deader than a doornail. You're Lord Jesus. Preach! God, you come Come into a place like this. You have come into an encounter of a powerful revival. Some of you still don't change, you know. Some of you still need to repent. Baptize in Jesus' name. Jesus Even though Christ, have mercy. Prophet, God is using her in the prophetic apostolic. And some of you are still not baptized. Some of you are still holding and going back to that whole brought down romantic system called Church, amen. You've got to step out of the Roman Catholicism. Everything that they have set up, my God Almighty, they have set up so many traps and have caused many humankind Jesus. to lose their soul. You have got to come out of the dogma of the Trinity. It's not of God. God is not a Trinity. God is one. The only thing the Bible said God does not know. One thing the Bible said God don't know. When I read that, I says, God, what you don't know. The only thing God don't know if there is another God. That's the only thing he doesn't know. If there is another Lord. If there's another God, he doesn't know another God. He only knows himself. So he manifests as father in creation, son in redemption, Holy Ghost right now in the regeneration. We're talking about the same Lord who came to the womb of Mary as a man in order to save us from sin so that we can have eternal life. But we are deceived by the romanticism of the romantic doctrine of Catholicism. We are deceived by a culture. Oh God, I've got to finish. Listen to me. Let me just finish by saying this. When you read the Acts of the Apostles, the Apostles were preaching and the main thing that they were destroying was the culture of the Jews and the culture of the Gentiles and bringing them into salvation. They come against the things that are not in line with the word of God, but it is religious. When they met the Gentiles, they told them to abstain from fornication and blood. They told them to abstain because that was their culture. When Paul went into Marzil and he met the group that have a big sign, we worship the unknown God. That was their culture, worshiping the unknown God. Many does that today. And he used wisdom and teach them the real God. You have got to realize that the move of the apostles, even in Ephesus, was to destroy the religion, which was a culture. It was a culture in Ephesus. And Paul had to infiltrate Ephesus to break it down. You know why? He was standing upon the foundation of apostles and prophets. And Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Therefore, my beloved brethren, let us earnestly contend, earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered to the saints, Jude 3. This foundation upon which we are anchored, this foundation is so important that Paul said in Galatians 1, 7 to 10, that if anybody come, Anybody else come on earth, anybody, it could be the Pope, it could, it, it could be it's, uh, uh, anybody else come, it could be Buddhism, anybody, any other religion comes, anybody, could be president, prime ministers, you name it. 
could be Allah, all of these things. Anybody else come, Galatians 1, 7 to 10, you can read it, no time to read it. Anybody else come and preach another gospel. Listen how important the foundation in which we are rooted this morning is. If anyone else come and preach another gospel, it could be me, he says, me, Paul. And we would say today, Paul the Great. Paul the Great. It could be me, Paul. Or an angel from heaven. My God. Mm. <laughs> he did not say an angel alone. From heaven. This is strong, my friends. This is serious. Let him be a Let curse. him be a curse. Preach! Jesus. Curse. My beloved, this is the same Paul who wrote that we are built upon the right foundation of the apostles and prophets. It means that the foundation cannot change. If you try to change this, a curse is on you. There are many persons who drive a Benz who live in a $15 billion apartment house. Many persons who are rich, preachers too, bishops. You call it the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I encourage somebody this morning. It doesn't matter what others may say. Let's get on the one foundation. Let's be rooted. Let's be grounded upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets so that when we say, Jesus, the heavens shift. The atmosphere change. My God, the climate change. The seasons change. And God says, I who that I call me, one of my son. Charge! Oh, God Almighty. My beloved brethren, this morning, I feel good in my spirit that I'm standing on the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. This is the season, my beloved friends, for us to move into that space. Don't let nothing occupy that space. The enemy is trying to take control of your space so that we don't have that powerful revival in your family. Lord God, you will see your children come back to God. But until we understand time that we are in, as we said yesterday, and season, we will never know what to do. Never know. But this morning, God is telling us what to do. What to do. Because the things that we will do on earth, even under the sun, is always going to be in line and aligned to this time and season that we are in. God uses these things all the time to create an atmosphere to enable us to flourish flourish my beloved now is the time to flourish good health and prosperity good health prosper spiritually prosper mentally prosper financially Oh God, don't you know that when you understand the foundation, you can open your mouth and command the bank to send your money? Some of us, listen to me. I remember when I just came from college. I know time is gone. Give me a few. I, I soon finish. Um, Sister Stutter, just give me a few minutes. Let me tell you this. And when I came from college, I did not have a job. I did not have money. I couldn't get a job. I was a qualified engineer. Very qualified. Can't get job. Apply, apply, apply. No job. Do an interview, interview, interview. No job. Well, God said, turn on the banks. The Lord said to me, there are Bank of Jamaica in Jamaica. Scotia Bank is in Jamaica. NCB is in Jamaica. 
stand in your governmental authority that made upon the solid rock, upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, and speak to the banks to send your money as if you are working. You will never know that I did not have a job because my money was coming. I command my money to come from Scotia today. I said, Scotia, send my money for today. Tomorrow, NCB, send my money in the name of Jesus Christ. And my money come if God go make a drunk, sorry, if God go make a bird. <laughs> here he come, he going to come. Come on now. He has never failed me because I understand my God, the foundation of apostles and prophets. Why do you believe the apostles, some person don't realize why they were crazy doing the things of God. They have signed, they have, they, 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 they have signed so many miracles. They have no reservation than to believe. Just imagine Peter in prison to be killed. And guess what? The man who put him in prison, worm ate him. Worm eat him up. My God. Mm. Paul went to preach to the governor. There was a little man they called Jesus Bar trying to stand in the way of the gospel, Jesus Christ. And Paul said, you son of the devil. And him said, you now will blind for a season. We don't see that happen yet. We don't see that happen yet. My beloved brethren, we have come on the verge of a powerful apostolic revival like the book of Acts. It's time to say, I do or I don't. I accept or I don't accept. It's time to say, God, here I am. Sign me up for this revival. Write my name. I am a soldier in the army of the Lord, rooted and grounded. I must manifest. I must see the greater works. I must see that before I go to heaven. I must have a testimony before I step into heaven, before the rapture. This morning, my beloved brethren, we are anchored in this rock. This rock is Jesus. This rock is the only one. This rock. I need somebody to raise your right hand right now. Just raise that right hand. Raise that right hand. I needed to raise it. Just raise it. Yes, raise it. Don't put it back down yet. Because, you see, I want God to move in that hand. That hand. Because we are planted upon the rock this morning. Father, I raise my right hand to you. That as of this morning, I will never forget. Somebody mm -hmm. said, lest I forget that I am founded upon the rock. I am anchored upon the rock. Yes, the winds are blowing. Problems are coming. People are crying out. But I trust in you, Lord Jesus. I trust in you. Tell him. Tell him you trust in him. We're standing on the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. The only one. This rock never fails. The only one. This rock is the rock that no man can move. This rock is the rock that will bring me out. If I'm perplexed, I will not be in despair. If I'm persecuted, I am not forsaken. If I'm cast down, I am not destroyed. Because I bear about in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, God never fails. He can fail. He is the living God and he will never fail you and he can't fail us.
Be blessed this morning. Be blessed, somebody. I said be blessed as you stand upon the foundation. In the name of Jesus, we pray this morning. We stand upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And we are on the verge of a powerful revival. Be blessed. Over to you, Evangelist Tudor, in Jesus Christ's name. Mighty God, oh, can we come on in the room? I don't know. The, wow, oh my God. Just come on in and worship. Thank Just you, come Jesus. on in. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah.